Hey everybody, we're out today uh, doing a little prospecting. I didn't bring any equipment with me, so today all I've got with me is a camera and my, my brain, and we're looking at a creek. And what I'm doing is picking out places on this creek that I want to look at further, and also so that I can make this video to show you the different places that I would pick to uh, take my test samples at and why. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, this is a pretty good example of a creek running and as you can see as I pan to the left that there's a gravel bar and I'm not sure you can see it but right there there's a big cedar tree and then there's a whole other channel over there that's now dry so when we talk about low points or low flow points and we talk about uh, what happens when the uh, water's flowing. It's easy to see that right now, the majority of flow of water is down through this area right in here. But when there's high water flow, winter floods, this is where the deposit's at. So that's an area certainly worth checking out. And as I pan around a little further to the left, you can see there's a little kind of an island right here, at least during high water. And on that far back side over there, right below that tree, there's another point in there where the water flows around behind it. So this little plot right here is an island. So during high water flow, this point right here is a low flow, the front of the island. So some deposits will fall out there. And then when the water flows around the different sides there, you can also see that some water flows down through here, and that slows very quickly as the gradient changes from a very high bank to a very, very low bank to the original stream. So that would be a good spot for sampling. Okay, let's move on. Okay, here's a pretty good example of a big wide bend. Flow comes from up here, swings around through here, down around, takes a sharp bend back, and another S. So good places here to look is right there. All along this shore right in here, because gold could be dropping out there. Now the other thing you might notice is that during high water that whole area right there gets flooded. If that's the case, and it is, then a better spot is back over here because during high water, high flow, when most of the gold is moving, it'll be back over here. What do you think? You don't know until you test it. Okay, we're, uh, we're looking at another part of this stream, and I'm just going to pan down through it. You can see there's a big uh, bunch of logs laid up in there that have caused diversion. There's some more logs back over there, far side of the creek. It goes clear over to the other side of that bank and the other side of the valley there. Cuts back, cuts around. And the reason I stopped here was to show you this. That big gravel bar in there has been cut through by the creek right now. However, I'll bet you during high water, that whole area is under and that's a low spot where the stream lays in. So I'm gonna zoom in on it a little bit, give you a better picture of it. That would certainly be worth running in there and taking some samples on it. Now I know there's gold in this creek, so Chances are I would do pretty well in there and find some gold. Anyway, let's move on. There's a picture of that in here simply because I just grabbed it. Ow. Let's look at some more water. This is the prime reason I came up to this spot was to show you what's going on here. Quite a little climb up this hillside, but anyway, the water starts right up in here and comes across and down. And it cuts back toward me, toward the bank, swings around, goes back into an S turn, and back around to another S turn. But the key thing here is if you look carefully through all that brush out there, through all that material, you can see what the high water looks like out there. In the wintertime, 
this whole area down here gets completely flooded. So this is all one big floodplain through here and hits this bank over here and swings back in toward me. That is all low flow zone. So checking around any of those spots out there would really be worthwhile. You can see that there's even some old stream bank where it used to cut back in along that far side over there. So that stream has been all the way across this whole valley in here. It's probably about, oh, maybe 50, 60 yards across. It's not real big, but you can see that uh, that stream has been all over this whole valley in here. So this is a wonderful spot for high banking. If you found a spot that was loaded, you can high bank it real easy in here. The water's available. You get far enough up off the creek where you don't get a lot of mess going back into the water. But yeah, that's a, that's a good looking thing. Makes my heart go pity pat. Because I haven't prospected up this far yet. But I will. Okay, let's go up a little higher. This is another part of that creek. And you can see that it makes a real sharp 90 degree and it comes back on itself. Slows way down right in here. See the gravel bar right, right there? All of that worth looking at. Too close to the edge of the hill here, it drops off pretty steep, a little cliff kind of. And then it crosses back over. And ends up right in here. Along that sharp cut of that bank in there. So anywhere along that would be good. And when you look across the creek, you can see that area where the uh, skunk cabbage is at. That's all would be good spots for floodplain. Just on the other side of that clump of alders in there, you can see the creek coming down this way. Just on the other side, of those alders are making a cut back this way and back around. But you'll notice there's a big floodplain in there. Now we're upstream from the uh, skunk cabbage, but you can see there's a big flat in here. Again, that creek's been all the way back and forth through there over the uh, over the ages. So I hesitate to say that there's that there's nowhere on there I would check. I think I would check just about every crook and cranny every time it made a turn. I'd be looking for gold in there. I don't know if you can see it, but that's a, a hole drilled in that log. And I know you can see that one right there. And there's another one right there. Holes are all done by woodpeckers. Biggest mistake you can make out here in these woods is to lean up against that thing. It'll fall right over on you. Still cool. Looking for bugs. I know the camera's uh, focused up here close, but way up there, that creek makes a straight shot all the way down to right about here before it slows down and makes a bend back the other way. That straight shot up there is not a good spot to look at because if there's a flood condition, all the gold gets pushed from there, pushed from there all the way down before it ever gets down here to where it might find a spot slow enough for it to slow down and stop. This is another good spot to look. If you can see that uh, there's a log or something across the creek and it flows down in and then there's a log right downstream so that whole area in there gets slowed way down so it's a good spot to check in the wet area. But you know the bank up behind, uh, excuse me, up behind that tree right in there, that wouldn't be too bad, neither with this one down here. So, uh, yeah, you never really know until you start sampling what you're going to find and where it's at. But it would certainly be worth looking at all that. Okay.